Bruxish is known for being like the ugliest Pokemon in existence. And also, no one uses it competitively. It has some mediocre stats, but its base 105 attack and 92 speed can give it some use. Its saving grace is in its two solid ability options of Dazzling, which can block priority moves used against it, or Strong Jaw, which boosts bite base moves by 50%. With that kissable strong jaw, Bruxish can actually deal some insane damage with Stab Psychic Fangs, which not only hits hard, but also breaks through screens like Aurora Veil. This also boosts coverage moves like Crunch and Ice Fang, and even Stab Wave Crash obliterates opponents, especially when we give it the Choice Band to boost our attack even further. Bruxish is often overlooked, but this thing is ugly, kinda strong, and proud. All right, look, I'm convinced that Bruxish has such low usage just because it's ugly. I mean, is it even that ugly? Yeah, it is. But it doesn't mean it doesn't deserve any love, and that is what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love for you to be part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is actually working with an all-starter team, which is both pretty interesting and honestly kind of scary. As I decided to lead off with the Azelf. They're actually going to end up leading off with the Meowskirada. Literally, I, I hate this cat for a couple different reasons, but most of all because this thing is like the embodiment of freaking power creep. It uh, is extremely fast. It's literally a point faster than Greninja. It has a move that always crits, and its ability is insane, and stab knockoffs are pretty damn powerful. It does actually go for the turn one knockoff. It, of course, does not knock off my Focus Sash, allows me to hang on by a damn thread, and then I can just basically lay down my Stealth Rock, and at this point, nothing really wants to switch into a knockoff, and since I have already laid down my rocks, it is now time to just go ahead and lay down and die, because nothing's coming in on this knockoff, and I decide sacking Azelf is kind of just the best play here. So, one more knockoff does, fin does finish me. I still don't know what item this thing is working with. I kind of imagine it's probably choiced in some way, and at this point, I decide my best answer to this is probably just to go right into the Hitmontop. I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing. I can then threaten it with things like a close combat. And uh, I'm going to try to grab a little bit of momentum back here. So the only thing that switches in super well to a close combat is actually going to be the Primarina. So I'm actually going to make a double switch. I'm going to predict them to actually go into that Primarina. And I decide to go into the Jolteon. You will, however, find out that since I switch out first... They actually stayed in, and they end up going for the U-turn as opposed to the hard switch. Tells me that thing is not choiced, and that is not ideal. Now, the good thing about Jolteon hard switching in is, since this is a quick feat set, it actually is able to now activate its flame orb and then start get zoom in quick right away. With my quick feat ability, it's pretty nice on Jolteon just because a lot of people, you know, they expect the Volt Absorb, but also it's kind of just like a now a nice little built-in choice scarf. Makes me faster than opposing scarfs. And as they do U-turn into the Rillaboom, I don't really want to be grassy glided here. I, I feel like Jolteon has a pretty good opening in this match, and I don't want to take unnecessary damage because, of course, I do take that Flame Orb chip. So I decided to make the kind of good middle ground play going into Scizor here, but it turns out they actually go for the high horsepower. That thing is, in fact, not a horse, and Rillaboom is quite scary. Both of the grass types on this team are very threatening. So, at least Scizor feels like I can take one more. Turns out I cannot take a horseshoe to the damn face, and that actually just kills me. It was probably a max damage there, and that is wildly unfortunate. I'm now down 2-0 at this point, and not feeling great, but I have some sweepers on my side that should probably be able to get something going. So... At this point, knowing that they're clicking high horsepower, I feel like, you know what, I can actually go into Jolteon. And here's one of the good things about going quick feet. It actually opens the door for me to run a modest ability, which gives me just a bit more special attack to the point where a Terra Ice Terra Blast actually should kill this Rillaboom if it doesn't have a special defense investment. So I put the old Snowflake on my dome, and a Terra Blast is going to come through. I, of course, outspeed. He does not Grassy Glide. And that is actually going to bring his ass to the Ice Age. And that does, in fact, kill the Rillaboom, which is quite scary. It has priority. And the thing is just a, a general freaking menace. So, Jolteon actually does benefit from the grassy terrain being up. Just because now, you know, it does kind of negate that Flame Orb chip. And while I did have to commit the Terra, at least we're able to grab that kill there. So, they now have the option to Revenge switch in whatever they like. And they decide to go into the Blaziken. So at least Blaziken is a, a mine that's pretty predictable and that I expect them to probably go for a Protect here. The only way that this thing outspeeds me is once it has uh, some speed boost action. So I decide to go for the Calm Mind expecting the Protect here. But instead, they actually go for the Swords Dance, which uh, is a good play overall because without a Calm Mind, I actually don't kill this thing with a Thunderbolt. 
And now it gets that Swords Dance up, gives it a nice little double to its attack. And also at the end of the turn, it's now going to get a speed boost. The good news and bad news about this interaction is that while Jolteon does still outspeed this thing with one speed boost, since they didn't protect turn one, that opens the door for them to now protect on the second turn, which is exactly what they're going to do. So I played that definitely backwards at this point. And as they do protect, it's now going to give this thing a second speed boost. And my little quick feet ass, my, my feet are not that quick. I'm not going to be able to outspeed this thing. Uh, this Jolteon does have investment a lot in HP over speed, just because with Quick Feet, we outspeed stuff anyway. And it just gives us a little extra bulk. Problem is, a Blaziken with a Swords Dance and a doubled attack and doubled speed is a freaking threat. But he's working with all the scariest starters, and I am in danger. So I don't really have anything that wants to switch into this, and I figure I'm just going to go ahead and sack the Jolteon. It's kind of a risky maneuver here. They do go for that close combat to finish me off. And as Jolteon goes down, literally nothing was coming in there, and I just kind of had to weigh uh, the options at this point, and Jolteon probably wasn't going to see you know, a full team sweep. So as the Blaziken does finish me off, they do get another speed boost, but he is running it quick as shit. But here's the good news. The reason why we sack Jolteon there is because our buddy Bruxish actually has a really good check to both of this thing's stabs. Now, considering that we've seen the Swords Dance, we've seen the Protect, that means, and we've seen the Close Combat, that means their final move is probably something like a Flare Blitz uh, to get its dual stab. And being Psychic and Water type, we actually resist both of those. So that means that we can take any attack that thing throws at us. And then I can actually end up killing it with a Psychic Fangs. However, they just go right into the Incineroar. It, of course, is not affected by the Psychic Fangs. But honestly, Bruxish, keeping that thing in the back is looking honestly kind of like my win condition. Especially since you know, the Blaziken now doesn't have any of the boosts. And uh, I need to try to keep the damn fish alive. So, as they go into the Incineroar, I'm just going to go ahead and swap out here. Of course, I am Choice Banded into that Psychic Fangs. And as Hitmontop comes in, I get smacked around a little bit with a Fake Out. But he's trying to get me to buy his hot Cheetos, but I'm not having that shit. And they're actually going to end up switching that thing out. Because the close combat is pretty obvious. But at this point, I figure it's going to be some meaningful chip on whatever wants to switch in. And as Primarina does come in here, it is useful because any amount of chip is pretty useful. Just for the Brux to have an easier time back there. So this thing does come in. I bop him around a little bit with these balled up fists. And uh, it actually does knock it around half, which is kind of nice. And... At this point, I'm feeling like this thing might consider going for something like a Calm Mind. I actually go for the Earthquake, which I end up outspeeding, which is kind of fun. And uh, as I do some nice solid damage there, sadly, they actually have the Draining Kiss. And that's just going to get all that damage back. And I'm like, well, damn it. I'm doing my slowest sad dance over here. And uh, that is kind of unfortunate. I don't have much that wants to switch into the Primarina at this point. I could potentially go Typhlosion, but it's not worth... Uh, kind of the risk there if they do end up switching or going for something else. So as they actually end up switching into the Meowskarada, I just go for a bullet punch just to get some last, you know, ditch effort damage before I go down. And I'm feeling like that's actually pretty nice because now I can actually get another bullet punch, knock this thing to around half. And I'm like, hey, that's actually pretty good. I'm just out here grabbing some chip for the road. And as I go for one more, we do knock it below half. They're actually going to end up finishing me off with the U-turn, which is kind of nice for me. It, it's a good play on their end, just because then, it, it, if they stay in, it opens the door for me to just go into Typhlosion and Revenge Kill. Uh, so instead, now they can choose whatever they want to go into, and they're actually just going to go Blastoise. So, Blastoise is, has a couple different options on this team. It's probably something like a Shell Smash set, which is what I always kind of expect it to be. And uh, it's not going to allow me to go into Typhlosion. And what they're wanting to do is probably put some pressure on the Bruxish, knowing that this thing is a pretty solid win condition at this point. And also, I can't really freely go for a Psychic Fangs. They do still have that Incineroar in the back. And I'm actually going to go ahead and make the aggressive play and go for the Wave Crash instead of that Psychic Fangs, expecting the Incineroar to come in. So... Uh, they do actually end up switching the Blastoise. They're going to, in fact, go into the Meowskarada instead, which uh, does turn out to be a pretty good mid-ground play here because that thing uh, does get killed by a Typhlosion. And as the Wave Crash comes through, it does actually end up knocking that thing out. You know, a freaking Choice Band stab Wave Crash from Bruxish, it hurts. He, he, d he don't look like much, but this thing, he's got some damage tucked in that weird, weird little top bulb fin he's got. I don't know what the hell this thing's all about. Anyway... The only thing stopping me from freely clicking Psychic Fangs is going to be this Chester Cheeto asshole, the Incineroar. And as this thing comes in, it does get an Intimidate. And I am like, you know what? After an Intimidate, I actually still kill here with the amount of chip I have. And a Wave Crash comes through and does knock out the Incineroar. So that's actually, that's huge. Because with that thing gone, 
Now Bruxish does have a pretty easy time just freely clicking uh, the Psychic Fangs, and all I really need to do is just ensure that I have enough health to take one attack from the um, the, the freaking Meowskerata. It's the only Mon left that's faster than me, and as they go pre-Marina here, of course, I'm locked into Wave Crash. I'm at minus one attack. My only play is really just to go into Typhlosion, and uh, we're really relying on the fish here, which a lot of the time isn't what you're looking for, but sometimes it's what you need. So, they go for the Moon Blast here. As I switch in Typhlosion, that's actually pretty good for me, because while it does get a special attack drop, which is annoying, uh, at least I am alive to tell the tale, and I can now, basically the only thing I can really do is actually lock myself into Scorching Sands, because I am Choice Scarf. I am able to go ahead and throw some nice little pocket sand at this thing's face, and it does literally nothing. Also, Scorching Sands has the ability to burn stuff, and I gotta tell you, I think Game Freak is lying, because I swear to god I've never seen it happen. Not that it would have really mattered there, but it's just kind of like, hey, it would be cool to see some sand burn some shit. But they do now finish me off uh, with the, uh, the, the water type hyper voice, and now it is all down to our friend Bruxish here. So, they have three Pokemon left. It's gonna be the Primarina, along with the Blastoise. And that big mean Blaziken. But I'm sitting at a pretty reasonable amount of health to where I feel like we can actually clutch it out here. So I go for the Psychic Fangs here. Of course, I do outspeed, take a nice little bite out of those pearls, and down goes the Pre Marina. So now that thing gone, the only thing that can really make it happen here is going to be the Blaziken. So as they switch into this thing, of course, I don't really have anything. I'm, I'm literally locked into Psychic Fang. So. You can probably guess what I'm clicking here. Now, it is super effective damage, and it all basically comes down to if this thing can grab a kill here. So they go for the Protect, make the smart, smart play, because that's the only way this thing is able to outspeed me with that speed boost. And uh, I feel like Psychic Fangs going through Reflect and Light Screen should go through Protect, too. Come on, go ahead and, go ahead and just buff Psychic Fangs a little <laughs> bit more for it. So... They get that speed boost, they are now faster, and as I'm looking at the damage here, I'm feeling like, you know what, I can probably live here. They go for that stab close combat, I'm able to barely live with 18 HP, which is amazing. And now, guess what, Blaziken, you're gonna have to give me a nice little psychic smooch. I, I smooch you with my teeth, and that does end up killing the Blaziken. So, we are now down to 1v1, their final mon is gonna be the Blastoise, and we are hanging on by a thread here. So. Here's the situation, I have minimal chip on this Blastoise, but if, it just, if it's a Shell Smash set like I believe it to be, a Choice Banded Psychic Fangs is enough damage to kill here. And as they actually commit the Terra, I'm thinking, oh shit, I kind of forgot that they have not terra yet. Please do not be something that resists Psychic, it turns out it is going to be the Terra Steel. Puts the axe on its head, which is incredibly unfortunate for me for the last turn Terra. I go for that last ditch Psychic Fangs. It's now not able to kill through the, cha the type change. And sadly, they can now fire off a flash cannon right through the right off the damn forehead. And that is going to kill the Bruxish. So, I just got absolutely hoed by the last turn Terra. And uh, sometimes that's the way it goes. Regardless, still a really good game. And honestly, they played that team really well and kind of capitalized on my misplays. And I thought that was just a fun match. But with that, that is going to bring us into game number two, where we're going to try to avenge our little Alolan Jinx friend. And let's jump into it. So this time, my opponent's actually going to lead off with Mr. Claw. They got the Gliscor. All my homies hate the Gliscor. Of course, I just decided to lead off with the dedicated lead Azelf. And my goal is to blow up and act like I don't know nobody, but also set up some stealth rock. And then most of the time, just try to get some decent damage on stuff. So, I do, of course, get that stealth rock up, which is going to be useful. And as I think they, you know, as a lead glide score, they're probably going to get the rocks up of their own. We're going to compare sizes. But instead, they actually just go for the knockoff. And Azel's like, hey, what the hell, man? I realize my forehead is big as shit out here, but I am just always getting knocked off on turn one. It's getting, it's getting real old. Also, I want to apologize, there is no game audio for this match, just because I will admit, I, as I was doing a recording session, I just did not have the box ticked to record my Switch. So that is probably why it seems a little bit ominous and weird, no noise out here, but deal with it. So I decide now to just hard switch into the Brux, as they probably just want to go ahead and set up the Stealth Rock here. I actually come in for free, and that ends up working out for me. So at this point, I actually have Ice Fang on this one, and I'm like, you know what, this guy's gonna for sure switch out expecting something like the Wave Crash or the Ice Fang. So, I go for the Psychic Fang, and they actually just stay in, and as they are able to take that instead of the Ice Fang, it actually now goes for the knockoff, and does get rid of my Choice Band. So that's gonna hinder uh, the damage that Bruxish can do, but at least at this point, they don't have a lot of switches into the Psychic Fangs, and I can just go for that once more. It does finish off the Gliscor, which honestly, 
it feels good. That thing going down is like the most satisfying damn feeling. And now we don't have to worry about the thing just protecting and toxicing and doing bullshit. So, as they now get a switch into the Jolteon, of course, the, this thing is very quick and I do not really want to take a Thunderbolt. The good thing about this team is that having Jolteon on the squad does kind of, it, it puts it to a point where they're kind of, they're not super free to go for electric moves. Even though I'm not Volt Absorb, it just kind of, the team preview there just puts it in the back of their mind. So, it turns out as I switch into the Hitmontop, they're actually going to go for a Calm Mind and I'm like, damn. We've got another Combine Jolteon brother on our hands, and at this point, that's kind of scary, except for the fact that I know that even at plus one, I can take an attack from this, just because I'm Assault Vest as Hitmontop, and then I can fire off a nice little Earthquake, and that actually just does take care of the Jolteon, uh, so with that thing gone, we're feeling good. I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. So, now with their switch open, they can bring in whatever they like, they decide to go into Green Bean, which is going to be... The Puke Green Dragonite. So this thing comes in, it set, it does take that Stealth Rock chip, which is kind of one of the main reasons why we set it up, is because now you do not uh, have your damn multi-scale. So uh, I'm kind of worried about this thing going for Dragon Dances. I don't know exactly what this thing wants to do, but I decide my best answer is probably just to go ahead and switch into Azelf here as just kind of a, a little sack switch here. So it turns out this thing's actually, as it goes for the Ice Beam, it is going to be a special attacking Dragonite, which is... Honestly, kind of sick. I forget that this thing has base 100 special, and it has just great special coverage, and it does catch people off guard. So, at least now, as Ava, Azov was there just kind of for a sack anyway, I feel like, you know, that's mostly fine, just because now, seeing the Ice Beam, it's probably a choice specs Dragonite. A lot of the time, if they're gonna be special, they want as much damage as possible catching people off guard, so it's probably specs, and that allows me to now go into the Scizor, who does look pretty nice if I can start to set this thing up. So. As they switch that thing out, probably does tell me it is going to be Choice Specs, and they actually end up bringing in the Staraptor. Maybe they expect me to go for something like a U-turn, but instead, I'm just going to go ahead and make these meaty claws nice and sharp. I get that Swords Dance up, and at this point, your frail ass is not going to enjoy a Bullet Punch. At plus two, a Bullet Punch definitely takes care of the Staraptor, which is great, because Scarf Staraptor is honestly a bigger threat than people make it out to be. So... Staraptor goes down, and now I'm actually in a pretty good position with the Scizor. So, I'm feeling pretty solidly set up with this thing, and as they go into the Galarian Slowking, I figure their best bet here is surely to click some type of fire coverage. A lot of these times, these things will have Flamethrower, Force, Steel type specifically. So, I'm actually just going to go ahead and commit the Terra Fire here. I tell you what, Scizor really benefits from not having to worry about that four times weakness uh, to fire. I put the candle on my dome, and uh, just in case they want to fuck around in Flamethrower. So I go for the Bullet Punch, consider going for a second Swords Dance just to be able to clean up the game, but uh, just uh, working with the plus two just kind of seems like the best bet here. So I do Bullet Punch him down to a Citrus Berry, and it turns out they actually go for the Yawn, which is in fact annoying. This this is or this time doesn't actually have the coverage with Knock Off. I've been kind of messing around with U-Turn and the Knock Off there. would have been super clutch here. However... Uh, now, being, you know, drowsy, I do not want Scizor to be put to sleep, and uh, I kind of have to cut the sweep short there because I don't, I don't want to be a sitting duck for setup, and also it's just annoying to be put to sleep. So, I go for the U-turn there just in case they switch. It also now just kind of doesn't put me to sleep. And with the U-turn kill here, the bad news is I have to go into something that they can see. Good news is it's a good time to go into Jolteon, because again, I come in and just immediately get my Flame Orb to activate, and now I am fast, which... It turns out Jolteon's actually faster naturally than everything anyway, so the Flame Orb kind of just bites me in the ass here. But listen, Qu Volt Absorb is overrated, and we're Quake Feet out here. So, they have two Pokemon left. It's going to be the Lapras along with the Dragonite in the back. So, as they go into the Lapras here, they're actually going to go ahead and Terra, because, of course, you know, Jolteon does threaten both of them with a Thunderbolt, and it turns out they do go for the Terra Poison which is now going to make it uh, nice and neutral. And honestly, Lapras is pretty damn thick. And this thing kind of turns out to be a little bit of a problem, as you're going to see. So I go for that Thunderbolt. It is not going to do a whole lot of damage. It does now allow them to Liquidation, which ordinarily would hurt. And I mean, it does actually hurt. But I have that HP investment, which allows me to live. And I'm wondering if they have the Ice Shard. Now, they don't go for the Ice Shard here. It allows me to go for one more Thunderbolt, but... They actually have the rest. It, it, the T-Bolt barely isn't enough to knock it out. And now with the rest, this thing, I'm like, okay, well, we haven't seen an item. And you know what that means? Chesto Berry. It's definitely going to be a Resto Chesto set. And this thing is a Resto Chesto threat. So 
<laughs> it wakes its own ass up. It is now chilling at full HP. And I'm like, well, if it has the Ice Shard here, that's where this thing's a problem. I just decide, yeah, I'm just going to go for the T-Bolt. They do not, in fact, Ice Shard, which is like, hey, that's actually kind of good. But it reveals what the final set on this thing is going to be. It's actually going to be a Curse set. With that priority Ice Shard, it now gets a plus one to attack and defense. And it doesn't have to worry about that speed drop with those priority Ice Shards. So I'm like, oh, shit. I love me some Curse priority, but instead, now I'm playing against it, and that's is scary but i do have a plan here now hear me out i'm just gonna go ahead and sack the jolteon we know that the ice shard is coming at this point and it's just gonna finish me off so here's the thing bruxish presents a pretty unique opportunity here now while i am just the strong jaw ability this thing does have also an option to run the ability dazzling which if you're unfamiliar, blocks priority moves. And as I come in and take that stealth rock damage, now they presented with a weird opportunity where they probably don't want to click Ice Shard on the off chance that I am in fact going to be able to block it with that dazzling ability, which I don't even have, but we're bluffing it out here. This thing can surely kill me with an Ice Shard. And going into this thing with that confidence, they do not click the Ice Shard expecting potential for that ability. It was probably a good play to just go for it regardless, just because, you know, a Psychic Fangs just kills anyway. And uh, we just came out here and just bluffed the shit out of him with that Dazzling, which is hilarious. And I wanted to just see if that was going to work out. It was like, I went into this thing so quick and confidently that they're probably like, oh shit, he blocks priority, I can't go for it. But it works out for us, and now their final mod is going to be that Dragonite. And of course, a Psychic Fangs does finish it off, and that is going to be the game. So I thought that was just kind of a hilarious ending uh, to the Bruxish just coming in clutch. I did have Typhlosion in the back, who more than likely could have just finished off the Lapras anyway, but Brux-ish does it herself, and that's clutch as hell. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we do have one more match for you, and this is going up against another team that has some pretty scary potential, but hear me out, I have Ugly Fish, so let's get into it. So this time, my dude's going to go ahead and end up leading off with the Toxapex. Pex is annoying, and he's just playing a little peekaboo with us and just being a dick over there. So. Of course, I'm leading off with Azelf just because it seemed nice and safe. And again, I'm here to set up my Stealth Rock. So I imagine as a lead, this thing has probably got some type of hazard shenanigans under its belt. As I set up my Stealth Rock, they are going to go for that Toxic Spikes. And while I don't have a Grounded Poison type to soak that up, which is annoying, I do have the Rapid Spin Hitmontop in the back, which feels like I'm pretty much fine with that because I get my Stealth Rock up for free. And at this point, I can now just fire off a nice little uh, little Psy Shock at him. So it doesn't quite do half, which is annoying. Uh, but at least the main thing here is to get some chip on the pecs. This thing is just going to be annoying. And we need to try to cripple it as much as we possibly can. So they actually end up going for the Toxic. This thing wants to see the damn world poisoned, it seems like. And uh, the Toxic is annoying because now my Focus Sash is broken. However, I should be able to at least take any other attack this thing wants to throw at me. And I can just continue to whittle it down with another Psy Shock. So it's unfortunately not quite enough to be a two hit KO. And he's just gonna Stranger Things monster my ass with a Hex. And uh, we actually do live that, which is kind of nice. So I imagine they probably don't really conserve this thing at this point. It got a Toxic Spike up. It's at least kind of taken care of Azelf. And I'm just gonna go for an Energy Ball just in case they want to switch here. And uh, they do actually just stay in and I just throw some balls at this thing's face and that's gonna take care of the Toxic Peck. So, Honestly, that thing being gone is great. I did have the Jolteon, which was a solid check to it and things like that. Uh, but any time that Pex dies is a win for us. So, uh, Azelf is kind of a sitting duck at this point. I'm low on health. They do have faster mods in the form of freaking Reggie Alecki. This thing comes around bouncing like it's his damn birthday. And I am obviously slower than this thing. So, I kind of just am like nothing really wants to switch into this. Azelf doesn't have a whole lot of utility left. So, they actually end up going for the Extreme Speed, which... I think it's weird because Reggie Lecky, is this thing not like the fastest damn mon in the game? Extreme speed seems like a little bit of overkill, but it, <laughs> it does finish me off. And uh, with the extreme speed, it kind of tells me this thing might not be running max speed or something. It often doesn't need to be, but uh, it also tells me this thing is physical. And it's probably going to be like a wild charge set, things like that. And Jolteon's a solid switch in here because as I come in on that toxic spike, it does actually, it poisons me. I don't need to use my flame orb. It also doesn't reveal that I'm quick feet. So that's actually pretty cool. They cannot go for obviously an electric move. I know that thing doesn't have any coverage on me really. So I'm actually free to go for a nice little calm mind here. I'm actually going to switch into the Swampert. So 
As I've been messing around with this Jolteon, a lot of the time I've been going Terra Grass just to cover four things specifically, specifically like this damn Swampert. And uh, as I'm looking at it here, you know, my highest damage is going to be, you know, something like a, uh, a Terra Blast Ice. And I'm like, damn, do I really want to commit the Terra early? It's not quite going to be enough to kill. And if they just Earthquake, I'm dead anyway. So I, I decide, as I don't have much that wants to come in here, I'm just going to Alluring Voice. You know, there's potential that they go for something like a Flip Turn expecting a Switch. But I'm actually just able to sing to it. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage. And then they do just Earthquake me. So... Down goes Jolteon, and I probably didn't play that super well. It was probably my best interest to save that thing, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stay and get some chip on this thing. It does tell me that this Wumpert is defensive as hell on the special side, and uh, Jolteon goes down basically for nothing. So that kind of sucks, but at least now I can go into the Hitmon top. Bad news about Hitmon top is while I can rapid spin these things away, I do have to come in and get poisoned, which slows this down. I, I always think it's hilarious when he goes into. <laughs> slower dance speed mode so i do go for that rapid spin uh, it gets rid of that toxic spike and i know that at least i can take an earthquake from this thing but honestly this swamp bird is kind of a damn problem so as i at least i do get rid of the hazard i now need to kind of start to whittle this damn thing down and that's kind of the downfall of defensive swamp bird is that it doesn't have reliable recovery so uh, chip is really important on this thing so i just now go for the close combat it is unfortunate having to you know, let the Hitmon take that much damage because now I'm not really going to be super useful. Close Combat doesn't quite have enough to finish this thing off, and they can actually just knock me out with the Waterfall. So I'll tell you what, Scizor actually thrives off of late game situations like this, where I feel like I can set up pretty easily on something like a Swampert, especially once it has, you know, this amount of damage. So I'm feeling like, in win condition might be looking like Scizor here, as I can bring this thing in, and their best option is to just go for an Earthquake, which doesn't even do half to me. So, I bring in big meaty claws, and I'm thinking, I'm just going to start dancing over here. Either they switch, or they just go for some chip, and as I get that nice little plus two attack, uh, we're looking pretty safe here. It turns out they actually go for the Stone Edge, which the only reason why you click that in this situation is for the high crit chance. It doesn't crit, and that's actually great, because Earthquake would have done more damage, and as they don't get the crit, feeling pretty good with that... I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get a little bit of, I'm gonna get a little bit greedy out here. I'm gonna go for a second Swords Dance, just because now Bullet Punch should be able to kill everything. As they go for that Earthquake, it is going to do obviously a considerable amount of chip, and now I'm looking like, okay. They, sadly, they actually do still have the Regieleki, which would be bad except for at plus two. I'm pretty sure a Bullet Punch actually, or plus four, does still kill uh, that fella, at least if it's not Focus Sash. So. I just go for a bullet punch here to now finish off the Swampert, and we're going to see if we can finish off the little the little late game sweep up with the Scizor. So that takes care of the Pert. That thing is annoying and bulky, and now it's annoying, bulky, and dead. So they do have the Dragonite left, which I kind of uh, glazed over a little bit. Here's the thing. Dragonite often is just most of the time going to be freaking extreme speed. Pretty much 90% of the time, going to have that extreme speed. Does go for it. However, I do know that I can at least take one. I was kind of banking on the fact that at least... I, you know, being steel type, I can take an extreme speed from that and potentially from the Regilecki. And uh, I do at least finish that thing off with the bullet punch. So Buddy did not get the opportunity to Dragon Dance today. And now they're down to two Pokemon left. It's going to be this Reggie and a Levani in the back. So as this thing comes in, I'm like, well, shit, I took too much from that first extreme speed from the Dragonite. And now an extreme speed from the freaking Regilecki does finish me off. And that... It's kind of hilarious because as I was talking shit on that thing having extreme speed earlier, it turns out to be the one thing that did in fact stop the freaking scissor sweep. So, now I just decide to go into the Typhlosion, and that is because if this thing is modest, I actually outspeed with Choice Scarf, and as I go for that Scorching Sands, it literally lives it with 1 HP, which is annoying. And it also shows that it has the Thunder Wave, which this thing is just a full-on utility Regieleki, and uh, <laughs> that is a damn bummer. I am now paralyzed, so it means it's faster. It can now just go for a wild charge, which I actually am barely able to live, which is clutch, and it actually knocks itself out with that recoil, which is amazing. It turns out I actually misspoke. They have two Pokemon left with the Levani and a Blaziken in the back, and as I Scorching Sands the air, they can now bring in whatever they like. So, they're actually gonna end up bringing in the Leaf Bug. And uh, I'm not super afraid of this thing, obviously, but of course it is going to be able to outspeed me. I'm locked into Scorching Sands, and my final mod in the back is going to be the Bruxish. So, uh, I do want to just let this thing finish me off, essentially, so I can get Bruxish in for free. 
and as it goes for that knockoff, it's gonna do exactly that. So here's the thing, Bruxish is gonna have to clutch it out for us, and here's the situation. Lee Vanny is actually an exact speed tie with Bruxish. We're both base 92 speed, and it's gonna come down to winning that speed tie. So I decide I'm actually gonna go ahead and commit the Terra Psychic. I figure if this thing is plus speed nature and it is a speed tie and I do lose that speed tie, I am just going to go for that Terra Psychic just so that I'm not going to die to a Leaf Blade. And uh, as I click that, I realize, hey, hold on, that actually might end up being a bad idea because now I do not resist the fire from the Blaziken in the back if I do win the Speed Tide. The problem is we have to win that first, so let's see what happens. I do actually end up outspeeding the Leaf Annie. Levin, I don't know what the hell this thing's name is supposed to be. I do know that, in fact, it is dead. The Terra Psychic does also give us enough damage to ensure that knocks it out. And now the final Pokemon is going to be this Blaziken. Now, I'm at full HP, and with Terra Psychic, I believe there's still a decent chance that I actually do live a Flare Blitz from this thing. So the play on their end is to just protect and get that speed boost and then just go for a Flare Blitz. Um, and I'm just locked into Psychic Fangs over here, of course. So I'm just going to do some Psychic Fang shit and just do some... Some purple biting of stuff, because that's exactly what we do. They are actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra. I'm like, oh shit, we got the late game Terras coming in at the end here. It's going to go Terra Fire for extra damage on a Flare Blitz, which is definitely going to turn my fish into some fish dinner, uh, uh, roasted as hell. But he actually does not protect. I don't know if he's not running protect on the Blaziken or what, but the <laughs> Psychic Fangs comes through. They probably just thought that they live a Psychic Fangs not having the weakness to it, but... With my choice band, we're able to knock that thing out, and honestly, we got lucky there at the end, uh, because with that Terra boost, all they needed it was the it was the speed. But Bruxish ain't gonna go down like that, and uh, that was just still just kind of ridiculous game, and just messing around with some fun stuff. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.